Nest hollows are really important because a whole range of threatened and other Australian native fauna rely on them for breeding, for feeding and for shelter. But unfortunately, it can take 100 years or more for hollows to form in old trees. And in some landscapes, we don't have lots of old trees left. So while we're waiting for trees to develop hollows, what we can do is actually do revegetation efforts and plant new trees. And in the meantime, we can actually use things like nest boxes that hollow dependent fauna can use in place of uh, natural hollows and old trees. Well, nest hollows are important because they're a space where a lot of our local native animals and birds, they need those spaces to breed, to shelter, um, in the case of some of our nocturnal animals where they shelter during the day so that then they can go out and forage at night. So there are a whole suite of fauna in southern New South Wales that rely uh, on hollows uh, in old trees and that will use nest boxes uh, if necessary. So these include micro bats, so tiny, tiny little uh, bats. Also threatened species like squirrel gliders rely on hollows for breeding and nesting and shelter. And there's a whole suite of birds, including parrots, that rely on hollows in old trees as well. It's not only the hollows in trees that are important, but it's the hollows that you end up with on, at the ground level. So fallen logs, fallen timber, because they then shelter another whole suite of animals and also the microorganisms that are the food source for some of the larger animals in any habitat. So landholders and land care groups in southern New South Wales have been doing some fantastic work uh, for, for threatened animals and other Australian native animals by planting up corridors of vegetation. So this is a silver wattle. Oh, growing of food. well, yeah, it'd be fantastic food for the gliders. So a really important role that farmers can have in the landscape is making these connections between where we have existing tree hollows and where there are patches where there are other tree hollows. So creating corridors and stepping stones to allow some of our animals that don't want to come to the ground to move through the landscape and be able to start utilising those hollows again because some of those hollows have become isolated and not available to these animals to use, particularly if they're a gliding animal or an animal that doesn't want to come to the ground to move through the landscape. So it's a slower process to be able to move through the landscape by them coming to the ground and they're much more vulnerable to predation. And that allows them to find additional food, new places for, uh, for, for sheltering and nesting uh, and allows them to meet other animals of the same species so they can breed and boost local populations. Nest boxes are a fantastic tool for creating um, an artificial hollow in the short term. So putting nest boxes into areas where there are tree plantations that aren't going to be 100 years old straight away creates immediate um, habitat for animals that require hollows for breeding. Tree hollows um, are a very slow natural process. So it can take some species of tree over 100 years to develop. It's really great to be working with children and seeing them out wandering around these woodlands and looking at these old tra trees and looking at old hollows and really appreciating the value of having these trees in the landscape. These hollows are great habitats for our possums. These bird boxes are great for our superb parrots. These logs on the ground are really cool for our bearded dragon. So the best things we can do are keep these trees in the landscape and plant new ones so that as they slowly die, these new ones will eventually take over and replace them.